This lesson is on writing equations in point-slope form and then using those to graph the line of the equation. Point-slope form is just another form uh, that we will use and it is really a form that we will only use when they ask us to write an equation. So whenever they ask us to write an equation, you should automatically think, let's start in point-slope form. There are uh, exceptions, obviously, to the rule. If there's a um, horizontal line or a vertical line, you will not use point-slope form. You can, but you probably will not. But this is a form that helps us whenever we are given either two points or a point and a slope. It helps us to find the equation of the line between two points. So here's the point-slope form. And I want to point out that this y will always be y. It will never be replaced with a number. This m obviously is a slope. This x is always x and never replaced with a number. So the ones that will be replaced with a number are the slope, the y1, which is the y value of our given point, and the x1, which is the x value of our given point. So you'll be replacing those three values. And then we're going to do some work to turn this into slope-intercept form, which is very friendly if we have to graph the equation. For our first example, we are given the point-slope form up in the right-hand corner, which we will utilize. We're also given a slope of 5. Obviously, slope is m. And we're given a point, and that point is our x1, y1. Remember that those subscripts are just counting, so it's the first x and the first y. Later on, we'll have more than one x and more than one y. For this example, we're simply going to replace y1 with negative 3, and it's customary for us to put that in in parentheses, where we'll place m with 5 and replace x1 with 4. Now, if they asked me to write it in point-slope form, I would almost be done, except we don't like to have a minus and a negative together, so we're going to keep flip change. That would make it y plus 3 equals 5 times the quantity of x minus 4. So if they said write it in point-slope form, this would be my final answer. Typically, we are asked to turn this into slope-intercept form, so I would then distribute on the right side so the left side remains unchanged. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times minus 4 is minus 20. And we're still not quite where we want to be because we are trying to turn it into slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, where the y is by itself. So now I'm going to subtract 3 from each side and get y equals 5x minus 23. This would be my final answer in slope-intercept form. So pay close attention to how you were asked to write the answer. In slope-intercept form, we could then graph this very easily by starting at negative 23 on the y-axis and then using our slope of 5 to go up 5 and over 1. And that would give us two points to connect to create our line. Let's try another. Again, we are given a slope, so m is 1 half. It passes through this point, which is my x1, y1. So I'm simply going to take my point slope form and replace y minus my y value equals my slope, and then x. And I have a minus negative 2. So you can certainly write minus and then parenthesis negative 2. But if you know that it's going to turn into plus anyway, it's OK to go ahead and write it as plus 2. So this is point-slope form. To turn it into slope-intercept form, I would distribute on this side. 1 half times x is 1 half x. Remember, don't get nervous about fractions. With fractions, we simply multiply by the top number and divide by the bottom. So 2 times 1 is 2 divided by 2 is 1. And then I would add 6 to get that y by itself. And that gives me y equals 1 half x plus 7. Here's one for you to try on your own. We have y minus negative 4. I'm going to go ahead and write that as y plus 4. My slope is negative 3. And then x minus my x value of 1. That is point slope form. They're asking now for slope intercept form. So again, I'm going to distribute. 
negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times minus 1 or negative 1 is plus 3. Negative times a negative makes it positive. And then I'm going to subtract 4 from each side to get y equals negative 3x minus 1. Sometimes they do not give us slope, so here is when we are not given slope, but again, we are given two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. So now we just have to add in that extra, which is that slope formula. So if you'll remember, that was y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm going to find the slope, which is 1 minus negative 1. And again, I could have written that as plus 1 and then 3 minus 5, that gives me 2 over negative 2 if I keep flip change, which is a slope of negative 1. And then I'm going to use point slope form, and it doesn't matter which point I use. So on this first example, I'm going to show you by using the first point, y minus negative 1, which would be y plus 1, and then my slope. And again, I'm using my first point on this example, x minus 5. If I then distribute, I get negative 1x and then plus 5. And then I would subtract 1 to get y equals negative x or negative 1x plus 4. Let's say instead I would have chosen my second point, y minus my y value equals my slope, x minus my x value. I would distribute negative 1 times x negative 1 times minus 3 gives me plus 3, and I would add 1 to each side, and notice my answer is exactly the same as it was if I chose my first point. So when you're doing point slope form, you only have to choose one of the two points to plug in. This one I did both points just to show you that it would uh, arrive at the same answer either way. For this one, first I'm going to find the slope. So m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm going to keep flip change here to make it 5, keep flip change here to make it negative 1, so my slope is negative 5. Again, choose either of these two points to plug in. I'm going to choose this point because there's no negatives, which means uh, fewer opportunities to make a mistake. So y minus my y value equals my new slope x minus my x value. I'm going to distribute. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times minus 2 is plus 10. Then I'm going to add 1 to each side to get y equals negative 5x plus 11. Again, I could have chosen the other point and arrived at the same answer. This last one is for you to try on your own and then press play to see how you did. Here again, I would find the slope by taking y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We're going to do a lot of keep flip change on the top and keep flip change on the bottom. Negative 1 plus negative 2 is negative 3. And then 0 plus negative 6 is negative 6. That answer will reduce to positive 1 half, so that is my slope. Now I'm going to use either equation. I'm going to choose this one. Um, you could really choose either one on this. Zero, um, we haven't done one like that, so I want to use one of those. So y minus my y value equals my slope, and then x minus my x value. This side turns into plus, so I have y plus 1. On this side, I have 1 half times x, which is 1 half x and 1 half times 0, which is 0. So if you want to write plus or minus 0, it really doesn't matter. As a placeholder, I'm then going to subtract 1 and get y equals 1 half x minus 1. 